I was busy doing a logo. Um, not actually a logo, a redo of a logo. So they had lost the vector part of it. But I came across this, and this has been bothering me for quite a while. And, you know, if you, if you go and you do the text, uh, and even in the circle area, you see this little line over here. And in the help section with the affinity guys, they were kind of commenting that it's kind of sometimes common with vector programs. But the problem is sometimes when you export it, this goes with it, even if you make a JPEG or something like it, or PNG, these lines go with it. So you have this here. The workaround for it is, or I should say, what is the problem, first of all? It's that um, when you go to the stroke here, you have these aligned features. Now, sometimes I I get a font that I'm using, but it's not thick enough. So I've got it bold, but I want it thicker. And then I go and I go select a line, stroke to outside. So that means that you have the, in this case, the text. And towards the outside, you're having the stroke. So it's thickening there. So between the stroke on the outside and the actual text, in this case, in this case, yeah, it's this uh, circle area and the outside. So that, if, if I click, let me go on to, let me see if I've got, so if you have a circle and I go to color here now, you'll see that there's color there. Now, just check here, if I go and I go remove that, can you see that disappears? I'm going to bring that back now. Let me just go and take that color and pop it back in there. So if I pop it back in there, even if I don't have it selected, there's this little fine line. Okay, and the challenge there is, is because of this align to stroke. Now, the reason I used it was to thicken the, the text where the font didn't have a bold in. Um, however, there are other ways of doing it. Um, so if you want this not to appear here, yeah, then make sure that you go to your align. And I would suggest then just go stroke to center. So if I go, let me now go on to this circle area and I'm going to go stroke to center and if we go off that there you see it's disappeared so that line is pretty much offset now from the edge and you won't you won't see it through there and in this case if you want to now you you're probably going to do the line thicker so it's almost double so if you were just doing in one direction the it was maybe three if you look at this, it was three towards the outside. Now when you take it aligned to the center, then it's one and a half to the outside. So you're probably going to take that, I think. Let me not over-exaggerate. I think it's six. Let's see. Oh, no, I'm selecting the wrong stuff there. Let me just select this curve. And let me go to six there. See what that does. Probably too much. Yeah, there we go. So there it pushes it out, and if you click off there, you'll see it won't be there. So the key is if you're seeing these lines, just choose a different align and, you know, move on with life. So in this case here now, I'll go on to the text, which is there. And so on three, I'm going to go again to align. Let's look closer. Align. So I've now lost a bit of bulk on it. In that case, I am going to just go there and maybe make it onto, let me take it one bigger at a time, see how it looks. There we go. So I think we probably could go to the, the six if I want to restore it to that particular point. Important to note here that when you do this with the align, make sure that the mitre is set to, I usually set it five or more. Five is ideal for me because if you go here to the default, I think it's two. Um, you might find that the edges, in this case, it's, it doesn't appear much. But in some cases, you're going to find the edges are going to be a bit sort of cut off. So I just do this as a routine. Oops, let's go with five there. Okay, so that's how to solve that overlapping story. Great. Uh, the second point that I want to cover here is something new in, uh, what's this version? It is version 2.1. Um, 
is the fact that you can click on the artboard label on top here to rename it. You don't have to go and click inside here. So if I want to go here, I say, I just double click on there and lines of tomorrow. Wow, what a name. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the other little tip. The, the main one is these lines here to get rid of them. And then this was also a thing that I was using here. I had a circle which was this circle and then I wanted to make it to be thicker like this. So I was looking at other options of copying it and making a bigger circle and doing a fill in between because now we have vector flood tool. So, you know, we could fiddle with that. But there's a nice and easy way to do that. Um, and basically you select that and if you look here in the context menu, it's saying convert to donut, convert to pie. You know, the pie would be this uh, parametric one that would have a split in. Well, let's just do it and see. Okay, there we go. Um, let me do this vector. Okay, so yeah, so that's vector. It will change it to pie. Control Z, Control Z. Okay, so that's when we do convert to pie. What will help when you do a, a thickening outline like this, where you're going to do some text to write in it, go and click on convert to donut this is quite powerful so you go convert to donut and there it places the inner circle and the outer circle isn't that cool so in a case like this i'm going to go control z i'm going to just move this across here and keep the shift down so i can just keep the context going nice so you can keep the the positioning okay it's not all that totally perfect. I just did this circle independently here. Yeah? But what I would do is control, alt, and shift. So it's, it sizes it, constrains it, etc. All that. So I'm going to go to the outside to where we get, say, to the maximum there. The reason I'm doing that is because when we click the donut, you see the extra line comes on the inside. And then I'm going to just shift it across. Keep shift again so you can constrain it. So it aligns nicely. And now when I go convert to donut, there we go. And I can now thicken that accordingly. And when I'm happy with the thickness over there, I can just go do a nice, oh, that's for the line. And then I can do a full color. There we go. Fill it with that color. And we have the line story. Isn't that cool? So the renaming the removal of those faint lines and using the uh, donut feature to take a circle and turn it into a donut and then you can utilize it for these nice sort of logo rings and so forth. Fantastic! So hopefully that helps you. Have a fantastic day, be blessed and shalom to everybody.